Yeah, hello, welcome on stage, everyone from all five uh, languages. Uh, here we are in the part where, firstly, we'll uh, have a evaluation uh, of the Best for Soil workshop, uh, the best, best for Soil materials, and also hopefully uh, have some good points on what to uh, carry on with. Uh, and this part uh, will Stefan take, and after his part, uh, then we'll stay on stage and uh, the different uh, who contributed uh, with Speaks today, uh, they join us and uh, you will be able to uh, ask questions to them directly. So uh, I'd like to give uh, Stefan uh, the word now and uh, please, uh, you're welcome to take us uh, through to the evaluation of uh, Best for Soil. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne, and hello to everybody. Like yesterday, you discussed some questions about the workshop and about the Best for Soil project. And today it was, what did you learn from this workshop? And what did you know before the Best for Soil project? And when I passed in your session, some of you um, discussed with, and you had a, a lot of interesting input for us. So thank you very much for your feedback for this evaluation part. I will summarize now the most important points about the evaluation questions in each country. And we will start with Vincent. I say hello to Switzerland, hello to Vincent. Hello, Stefan. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I think the what came out mostly is especially that the best for our website should stay on forever, not just for one more year after the end of the project. And same, of course, for the for the databases. And that is really the the, the point that we were six all in all, <laughs> well, not but you had three, four people really participating it was interesting. So that's, they, they appreciate it and, and they have also idea what we can do more, but especially this fact that Best for Soil should not disappear at the end of the, of the project. Thank you, there are good news. And we will go further to Harms in the Netherlands. Hello, Harms. We'll have a look if he's here in backstage. You have to go backstage. No, he's not here. So we will go to Germany. And in Germany, there is Michaela. Hello, Michaela. What did you discuss now about the project this morning? It was very quiet again in Germany, so I think they uh, are not used to uh, have these possibilities and uh, therefore it was good to introduce. They didn't know a lot of uh, Best for Soil, so we showed them and I think they are open and I hope for the Germans they will write uh, what remarks they have. At the moment they were a little bit quiet and maybe also the technique in Germany is not so good as in other countries. Okay, thank you. And you as participants, you always have the possibility to write in the chat also now in the in the stage on the stage. And when you are on this best for soil website, you also have uh, the possibility to give, uh, give us uh, a feedback. So we will go to Ireland and there is Michael, and you joined us at least because you had a lot of discussion, I think. Hello, Michael. Uh, hello, hello, Harm. Hello, Stefan. Harm, would you like to speak or will, should I go? Uh, I Michael. think, Michael, you can. Michael, I'll move can ahead, start. sorry. Apologies. Yes. Um, yeah, I, we had some good feedback um, today. I think it was, uh, it may, may not have been structured the way uh, it. We, we asked for it, but I think the feedback is very positive. Um, some of the comments, um, some great presentations and excellent discussions. The workshops were well put together. The website is a great resource with a wealth of excellent information, great fact sheets. A lot of the information in the databases, which is great, but it also makes slight, navigating it slightly clunky and it would be great to have more cr crops. So again, people like it and possibly want more. They want to add 
a few more crops, which is really positive because it shows they see the value of it. Um, so the comment, the best for soils database is the best starting point for rotation and cover crop planning, and it is far better than anything else that I know of right now. Integrated pot crop management requires information on the whole rotation. This is essential for everyone. Um, so again, a lot of feedback. And the last one I think I like, uh, in my 46 years of agronomy, some of the presentations here have been the best yet. This project is very, very good and informed agronomists in the UK are very keen to use this. Holistic agronomy is the only way to work. So again, um, we had some very active participants this morning, but I think in general, the feedback is, it has been very positive. Okay, so I can say 12 points to Ireland. So <laughs> thank you, Michael. And I suggest now, Harm, that we can continue with Harm. So Harm from the Netherlands. Okay, yeah. now you are here. I give you the floor for a short feedback about the evaluation questions, please. Yeah, that's, we also had um, some very nice um, uh, discussions, yeah, very interesting presentations uh, this morning. Um, and, uh, and when we asked the people what did you learn from this workshop, there were some new insights and based on what they heard in the, in the presentations. Um, the database is a um, very strong, uh, powerful in instrument. Uh, but based on the um, presentations, we were looking for uh, a tough trap PC that was that was in the presentation uh, this morning, and we already found out that this is not in the database yet. So um, room for improvement, but um, very nice that all this information is um, is available and can be used by farmers and advisors. So very positive. For many people, it was um, best for soil the website and the database are uh, rather new. So not too many, too much experience uh, so far, but for sure the intention to use it in the rest of the project, uh, because um, yeah, the, the strong, powerful instruments available on the website. Thank you, Harm. And now, last but not least, we will go to Denmark, to Marian for the evaluation part, please. Yeah. Uh, I'd say we had more comments uh, and suggestions yesterday than we have today, but still, uh, the comments that we got, uh, they are looking forth uh, that people uh, would like to uh, gather uh, about some topics. Uh, uh, we, uh, the microbiome uh, speak and, and also Vincent's uh, speak, uh, made people talk about uh, organic matter and uh, also compost and, uh, and the life in the, the compost and uh, compost extracts. So, we were uh, wide around uh, and uh, and talked about that, but but also uh, this uh, made up uh, some more questions uh, also around uh, BCA biocontrol agents and uh, and people would like to uh, know more about uh, what's uh, important to uh, how how do we control uh, the not wanted. Uh, substances in in compost for example microplasts and and other things that we wouldn't like to have in the compost also um also the the um biocontrol agents uh, people would like to uh, have more uh, awareness of that and and would like to hear more more about that so i think it's uh, it's more what uh, people also would like to hear and uh, there was more that that we heard uh, and not as much uh, what what uh, if they were satisfied with uh, what they have uh, been told uh, so far but i think um, there was no uh, negative com <laughs> uh, uh, comments so uh, i think uh, if uh, people would like to share something with us it's also possible later uh, to bring in uh, topics uh, for discussions uh, internationally uh, or, or just bring in comments uh, to this workshop. So if they don't want to uh, send it in a chat, uh, you're very welcome to, to send it afterwards in a, a mail. So um, it's not uh, so that it's closed down for, for these comments at the moment, but uh, I think we had some interesting talk in, in our session too. 
Thank you, Marianne. And it's exactly that. The aim of the Best for Soil project is also to create a network. And it's exactly the, this type of workshop who can do this to. Okay, so the workshop is already finished. That's why I would like to thank you, the participants, for this useful information. A great thanks also to the moderators, the secretaries, and the whole organization staff for the good cooperation. And the last information, in 2021, we will start a final survey about the whole pro Best for Soil project. So if you get a link for an online a survey uh, next spring or summer, we would like to encourage you to take some minutes to give us your feedback. Thank you for that. And I give back now the floor to Marianne. Yeah, as Stefan said, uh, they are still, it's still possible uh, to evaluate uh, this project uh, later, later in, in 2021, uh, but it's, uh, it will uh, carry on uh, through the most of uh, 2021, which means that we still have a lot of possibilities to uh, meet in uh, different uh, stages around uh, uh, I think it will be virtual, but uh, still, I think we should uh, meet and talk about uh, different topics. And um, now uh, we are in the, the panel stage uh, where we would like to, to bring in uh, the speakers and, uh, and share the comments and, and questions from the different languages. So uh, I'd like to uh, invite the first speaker, uh, Mons, uh, here to stage, uh, and uh, I would like to hear if some of you have some uh, questions for him. Maybe, uh, maybe, um, maybe Mike, this was Michaela. <laughs> You're welcome too, Michaela. Okay, May Michael, it would be nice uh, if you could tell me if you have uh, questions uh, from your language yes. uh, to yeah. some of uh, the speakers this morning, because we were happy to have both uh, Mons and, and Marianne uh, in our session in the Danish part, and uh, Vincent, he was in the French, so you didn't have any of the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> I luckily had some colleagues who who, who were there yeah. to help. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I suppose a, a common question that came in a few times from Owens was, um, and apologies, I'm just going to read this so I I can get it right. Uh, yeah. Um, in general, what does he Moans think about the supply of sludge and possibly other food composts with regards to residues of antibiotics or multi-resistance material? That the effect that that will have on the biogenome of the soil. So that question came in a few times in slightly different versions, but that was a question that was asked of Moans a few times. Yeah. Do you want all the questions together? Is Moans here? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry into the okay, he, he says he, he has problems with entering a stage. I also Which... have a question for Vincent, if you want to. Yeah, yeah, that'll okay. be for uh, Vincent, um, we had a farmer ask a question. Um, does, do, does Vincent think there's any benefit in using a microscope to assess the soil microbiology, or is DNA sequencing the only way to make any substantial conclusions? I think today it's really DNA, it's molecular methods, because they say in with microbial me methods, traditional methods, you assess 1% or even less of the of the organism in the soil. It's, as, it's even with the molecular methods, they say still 99% is not known, but at least you have access to it. And I think it's the traditional methods are not not strong enough to do it. And you see microscope, I mean, you can see the, the, the pathogens or if it's a pure culture, but in the soil, you just don't see them. Thank you. Yeah. 
but perhaps we, we, I would also have an, a question to Mons. <laughs> I mean, not yeah. me, the, the persons who were with me. Yes. Uh, do, do you hear me now? You hear me now? Who harm or me? No. Do, do you hear uh, me from Denmark? Yeah. Me? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just that we are working on uh, getting uh, Mons on. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't work at the moment, so uh, we try him again. So uh, I think we should uh, carry on with uh, questions to uh, to Vincent. Uh, are there more questions to uh, Vincent? Yes. If, um, no, you have some, Ham? Yeah. We saw in a presentation um, uh, Phytophthora pisi as an important uh, fungi for beans and peas. It is not in our database yet. Uh, Vincent, as you were the leader of the data mining, was this overseen or is there too little information available on this fungus? Can you answer this question? I can answer this question. It was not, it didn't appear during data mining, but the Marian informed me later on that uh, this disease, and I said, okay, we will inform Lendit so he can add it to the database. But I yeah. think with the, all the work to finish the database, he had no time to, to add it. No. But it's on the list, it will be added to the database. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. This is a, a din dynamic <laughs> database. Oh, yes. And, uh, yeah. And also a question for uh, Marianne, as she was telling that um, pig manure had an effect on these um, diseases in, in peas. And uh, we were curious what effect it was. Um, and is it only for pig manure or also for other types of manure? And what is the, the mechanism behind it? Does she have any answers to this question? Can we have uh, Marianne on stage? Okay, um, I get a comment uh, that uh, they will bring moans in now. So sorry for the confusion. Hi, moans. Hello, moans. Hi. <laughs> now you are Can loud. You hear me? Hello? And we hear you okay. and we see you. Yes, perfect. Now I sort of forgot the questions. But <laughs> yeah. So please, uh, Michael, uh, can you repeat? Hi. I can. Mons, hi. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting. And it garnered a lot of uh, questions, particularly around the area of um, the application of sludges and food composts onto soils and how, how you think that that might affect the soil, um, the soil microbiome, particularly in relation to uh, resistance or residues of antibiotics. You, you you are online. You are online, Mons. We see yeah. you. But do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had uh, now I had some problems with the sound. Uh, the sort of a delay. So uh, this is uh, it's not really my my area of expertise. I would say, but but I would my general answer would be that if you, if of course if you add contaminants uh, like especially in anti antibiotics you'll certainly affect the the microbiome so no doubt about that um, i mean that's what antibiotics are made for so um yeah i don't know if that answer is your question that's perfect i i know it's not it wasn't directly related to your presentation but it was a query that came through quite heavily mm. Do you have more questions, Michael, to Mons? Uh, there was another question around the application of some of the commercially available bacteria and fungi, the trichoderma species, the bacillus species. C do you feel that they could positively influence the general plant microbiome? And then people asking, have has work on this been done? 
Well, it depends a lot on how you apply the 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 biocontrol agents or whatever whatever it is. Um, so I think that um, of course they have potential and they will affect the microbiome as such. But I also had uh, in my in my presentation. I mean, I I, I express the idea that or the 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 view that. Uh, if the conditions are not right for those microorganisms that you apply, they won't persist. Uh, I think they'll they'll if if you don't have the right uh, of the healthy soil with the organic content and so on, it's not enough just to add a, a microorganism or a group of microorganisms. So so I think why why you're going to start is to have a healthy soil with the and a good crop rotation and so on so on. Uh, um yeah that's that's sort of my 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 idea but of course uh, um for instance um treatment of seeds before sowing could be a good option i think to to use biocontrol agents because that's very uh, a very targeted uh, approach where you really add the microorganisms where you need them very good thank you very much i'll i'll let somebody else have a chance to ask a question now okay Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Vincent, you had a question to Bones. Uh, we don't hear you, Vincent. We don't hear you. Yeah, I, I moved you to the side. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, hello, Bones. Thank you for your presentation. I, 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 you. I appreciate it. I have a, a question from the French group. Uh, it was a question just what green manures do they influence the soil microbiome? Uh, and even further, in which way was also a question, but I think already the first one. Do they have uh, influence? If you incorporate yes, mm -hmm. yes. I I think whatever you do, it will affect the microbiome. Um, I think it's 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 hard to get it give a general answer on in on the the way they do it, and I think as far as you uh, as long as you improve the. Um, the organic content and the soil structure and so on, you'll also have a positive effect. But I think it's very hard to 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 uh, to come with one general answer on whether they are, have a positive effect. Okay. Um, thank you, Vincent and Moons. Um, Ham, do you have more questions for Moons? I have a question for Vincent. Um, as from the Dutch uh, session, eh, we, um, the conclusion was that soil-borne fungi are a growing problem, perhaps in the Netherlands, and uh, perhaps a little bit ignored. But in the contrary to nematodes, we don't have too many good ways in uh, um, assessments, eh, lab tests, etc. Um, are there tests? that will be developed or are there tests for soil-borne pathogens that can be used in practice? That was the question that came out of the group. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, 10 years ago, I think, I, I discovered uh, an enterprise or, that makes molecular tests, commercial molecular tests, uh, a range of 100 different pathogens. So we tested it. I was not really convinced, but I think that's the way it could go. It should go. Something you take a soil sample, like for, for, for the nutrient content, and you send it to another lab, and they will tell you what you have in a soil as a pathogen. I think that's that could be a way to do it. Um, because the, the classical test is. But are there any tests available now at this moment? Yeah, there is. A, I, I cannot make advertisement. Validated for tests? They, there is, yes, or at least there mm -hmm. was, because a few weeks ago we tried to contact them and there was no more response, but they're still on the website. So, mm -hmm. but the real question is then, even when you, you measure the, the, the content from in the soil and can say you have this and this and this species, what does it mean? You know, that's probably the tricky point then. Because we know it's not only presence absence, it's also a question of quantity. Do you have uh, one unit or 100 or 10,000 units? And that's, that's probably the most 
Yeah, yeah, but I think the first thing to know is, is it present or not? Eh? Um, then you take, yeah. Yeah, so. you see, with the molecular thing, you can find just a very small amount. So, so what would then your recommendation be to farmers uh, if they take this serious and they want to manage the soilborne uh, pathogens? Uh, uh, we had discussion in our group and, and I was thinking that were the bio test presented by uh, Marian I really like this one. You make bio tests, and I think this could be something to be developed. In the past, there was a test in France developed called Test de Bouo. Uh, it's 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 pub it was published, and, and I saw then on the on the website for FIBO that they use this kind of approach. They used it for testing soils, especially leguminous diseases, and I think this is a very good, a little bit old-fashioned, perhaps a very good way to measure the. The, the soil health status of, of your soil, specific bio tests, perhaps for different crops, you know, yeah. Some, something that really responds very fast to any, to, to very low inoculum of, of specific, uh, for some fight off torpezi, then you have a test and as she, she showed, bio, why not making bio tests? Mm -hmm. And this could be done by the, the growers. In many cases, it could be very nice to know more about what's going on in the soil. And the uh, soil sampling uh, for the microbiome was also uh, a point that uh, we addressed uh, in the Danish session uh, after Mohn's uh, speak. So do you have comments to that uh, microbiome testing, uh, Mohn's? No, I think I think it's for all other kind of testing. You have to to sample correctly. I mean, if you have a field, you you don't just field in one uh, sample in one end of the field. So you have to make a representative sampling if you want to 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 uh, to um, uh, get a statistical sound. Uh, but otherwise, for 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 the microbiome, we we yeah we are often criticized because we only use I mean in DNA and analysis we only use like a quarter of a gram of soil or something like that. So you need you need in your initial yeah. steps to yeah. really to mix your sample and so. But that's a little bit more technical, I think. So. Yeah, yeah, but still very important. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Moon. Uh, yeah. And I'd like to bring uh, Michaela in. Uh, I think she has a question for you, Mons. Yes, hello. Uh, Welcome from Germany. Yeah, we had a question at first. Do you have experience for the influence of fertilizer to the microbiome, especially for those fertilizer which are um, in minimum, like calcium, silicium and boar? No. I don't no, I don't have any experience with that, but it would be easy to set up an experiment to to analyze whether those uh, um, uh, nutrients have an effect on the microbiome. But it's it's yeah, it, it's complicated. I mean, there are so many things that that could change in the microbiome. As I said in my presentation, I mean, the, the, there are thousands of different microorganisms, so and we know so little about which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones, except for <laughs> pathogens, of course. So it's a, it's very complex, um, and it would be it would be doable, but you you need to do your some proper proper experimentation, I think. Maybe that is uh, identical to one suggestion and the question of Michael before. What ex uh, effect can we expect? And people in our session said, if the soil is very poor, like in Brasilia, it is easy to find an effect. But the soil here in Europe is a little bit more puffered or in better health so that it uh, an effect is difficult to see of applying microorganism yeah. additional mm -hmm. that is but i still have a third one uh, question it was um, can we find differences you said that there are different microbiomes 
can be found on old varieties and uh, new bred varieties? Can you also find differences in biological grown material and conventional grown material in the microbiome? Yeah, there have been some some studies where you see that uh, organic uh, farming uh, has a positive effect on on the on the microbiome in terms of um, more diversity and more um, yeah more diversity. So, but again, well, not all. Bio or diversity doesn't have to be good, so it has yeah, to yeah. be tested. It whether could be those, like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it Would could be, be the bad ones in the U boat from Vincent. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, usually we we tend to think that high diversity is better, but uh, and I think it's that could easily be the case, but we don't really know. I think so. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Michaela, and thank you, Mons. Um, now I'd like to uh, just uh, share with you uh, some comments uh, that's in the chat, uh, which I can see now. Uh, Bioassays are also quite expensive, however. But maybe I think uh, they could pay off still, but uh, of course uh, you need to decide when to do measures and, and when it's not necessary. What about the idea to use a soil sample for growing a susceptible cultivar indoors by the farmer himself? Um, that's uh, another bio essay. essay. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if it's just a comment or if it's a question. But it's also always a good thing to explore ahead instead of uh, having Bad, um, bad things uh, done in the field. I, I uh, if the background knowledge is there, certainly. I mean, testing for a fungi would be different for testing for a protist peregrine. Um, okay, there are some comments here. It is a question. Okay, Bert says it is a question. Who would like to answer him? Could I see the chat again? Thank you. Uh, what about the idea to use a soil sample for growing a susceptible cultivar indoor by the farmer himself? What is the idea is that he samples soil? I, I think uh, if I understand, it is, it's like if he do his own bioassay yeah. yes. uh, before growing a crop. I, I, I would like to mention two points. Wait, just. Experience with Melodotrine sheet woody in Holland. So the farmer grow in a plastic pot mm -hmm. uh, in front of their doors uh, the next year. And maybe instead of this expensive test, they can start with that. I think that I agree. I think it's they say it's expensive already. The, if the farmer can do it himself, it's less expensive. I mean, cost him time, <clears throat> but still, that's already one thing. And and I think you have to insist on the sampling. I know from Germany there is uh, Neubauer, Professor Neubauer. He he has a method to determine reticillium in the soil. It's one of the rare pathogens you can measure. I also do it in my lab. And he says for for soil sampling, you have to take 250 cores for one field, not 30 or 50 like you do it for uh, for 30 light, for nutrients, but 250. So that's the point that gives uh, quite some work, you know. But that would be the same if you would test it in a in a lab. This work you have to do, but it's really important because uh, many of the soil borne diseases are not evenly spread there in, in patchy you know like they have a lot here then nothing here and again here so the sampling is really important i guess for nematodes is similar because they are not evenly distributed so but then once you have done this work if you do it yourself your bio test i think it's a great mean to do it i think it's you can do it yourself you just have you have just to be sure that he has 
in general specific varieties for doing the testing uh, and, and and that's perhaps what we have what is important as an information for for a grower when he's doing it himself thank you vincent um I don't have the time to run through uh, all the chat, uh, but if uh, one has a last question to uh, to Vincent or Moans, uh, I'd like you to uh, to write it now because uh, then I think we should have uh, uh, Marianne on the stage. Marianne, will you come to stage? There's a question from Michael while we get Mayen on. Oh, is it uh, it's Ham who have a question? Sorry. Um, Michael had a, um, a question in the chat, and I think that. Okay. Interesting one. Is it wise to grow veg, clover, fenugreek, uh, in a farmer grow pea, beans, or even might do in the future? That will be also Yeah. So, uh, Mayen, welcome here on stage again. Thank you. Um, there, there's a written question here for you uh, from uh, Michael in the English uh, workshop. A, uh, is it wise to grow wedge, clover, fenugreek in cover crops mixed if a farmer grows peas, beans, and or even might do it in the future? And I think uh, that's also what we uh, discussed uh, in our Danish workshop uh, about both uh, different uh, different crops. And, and also we, uh, we addressed the question about um, cover crops uh, and their part in the, in the, in the crop rotation. So please, Mayen, if you will answer the question. You, we don't hear you. We don't hear you. Good. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, if it's wise to grow, these uh, uh, crops as uh, cover crops, I would say it's, it, it's not wise, I think, to do that. If you're going to grow peas or beans in the future, yeah. because it takes a very long time because these uh, pathogens will disappear later. So, um, I think you should be careful when using these crops as some cover crops, yes. Yeah, and, and also as in the rotation itself, um, they should uh, yeah, uh, make a concern on how uh, often it should come. So maybe you could uh, yes, say almost uh, a little of what you said uh, in the Danish session about uh, the crop rotation concerning these uh, uh, these plants and uh, these crops and and also uh, about the catch crops um, I didn't uh, get it exactly you mean if which crops you can grow or uh... no no uh, how often uh, how often or how, or how seldom <laughs> okay. yeah yeah, and yeah. also uh, the the thing with uh, the ore spores uh, that you uh, expect uh, could easily be a problem in uh, in in catch crops uh, and cover crops as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So if we are talking with this about uh, Aphanomyces or Phytophthora, these ore spores can survive for a very long time in soil, and that's why I think you should wait. As a general rule, you should wait uh, eight years between uh, susceptible crops if you don't know if you have these pathogens in the soil. 
So I think yeah, it's a quite long time maybe to wait eight years, but I have had examples of many farmers who had they got a, a big infection in the in the soil and it takes more than 15 it can take 20 years before they can grow peas again so um, i think you should be very careful so yeah. don't increase the yeah. Yeah. i think uh, i saw in the chat or somewhere heard somewhere that that uh, there will also be a question uh, about um, the slurry or the addition to uh, to pea crops. Yeah, uh, you mean this pig manure? Maybe it was. Yeah, a question yeah. About that. I think, uh, according to the literature, it's uh, something about ammon the ammonium NH four. Uh, that has a negative impact on uh, aphanomyces, at least. I think you can find that in the literature. Um, we have not done any research on the mechanisms by ourselves, but um, I think that is the background, that we see a, a, an effect of a pig manure. Sorry, I didn't hear the last 15 or 30 seconds. <laughs> I was uh, offline, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, did you get further questions? Um, doesn't seem so. If you, uh, if some of you facilitators in the different uh, languages uh, want to uh, get in, so please uh, ask to. Uh, Michaela, would you like to go in on stage? Okay, um, I get an information that uh, the, the system cracked, it crashed, mm -hmm. so, uh, so all the uh, people were held out <laughs> and not all are back yet. seems that we are only 13 in here now, it's counting up again. You hear a strong echo. Uh, do you have more than one browser open, Pam? Um, okay, people are coming back in. Hmm. What a problem, I see. Okay. Uh, just perhaps because of the, the pig slurry, there was research done in Canada. They used that to to control the decilium in the soil. And in fact, it was ammonium. It was after with a special nitrite that was accumulated. That that was that is really toxic and that reduced the verticillum in the soil and I, I think i did my phd and was also on on uh, on urea in the soil and what i figured out was that the nitrite that can appear in the soil not the nitrate but nitrite that kills the soil borne pathogens but there are specific conditions you have a nitrate nitrite accumulation one could be a lack of oxygen so if you have a, a lot of water in the soil you now flooded, waterlogged soils. You can have nitrate accumulation that can kill, can kill the the pathogens. But not only the pathogens; it can also kill the plants. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah, sorry, we had some uh, major technical uh, problems, and we don't have uh, too many people in at the moment. I hope they arrange to get back again. Yeah, 
uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. So uh, I think we are at the end of the session and therefore they ask for something and then everything knocked down. So uh, we had the same questions as you answered before, Marianne, with the crop rotation. But in Germany, they are not so afraid of this uh, diseases you mentioned. We are, I think, a little bit behind you with the uh, faba beans and uh, peas using in the rotation that is just starting in Germany. And our uh, growers say five to six years is possible in the rotation to use peas and uh, faba beans. And we say that you can switch between small seeded and big seeded legumes. So a clover doesn't influence the diseases of a faba bean. And that is also what we did in our trial experience. We can grow faba beans behind clover grass blends as a co cover crops. So it was uh, interesting to see the diseases and very good trials. So, uh, but they are not so afraid of having these diseases. But we will wait until they are coming. <laughs> Thanks. Or, or prevent, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. That was the response. It was the eight years and you asked, did you see the, uh, the problems? No, we don't see them so much. But I think we will have to wait and they are coming. But maybe with climatical change, we will see. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. And Vincent, you are on stage. I am. And by <laughs> end still, yeah. And we yeah. Uh, have lost a lot of uh, listeners. Uh, they haven't been back yet. There was so, a uh, Did you pardon? see? There was a window popping up to give a feedback. And once you gave it, you could not come. It was like blocked the whole thing. So I, 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 yeah. I left and came back. Yeah, that yeah. That's First, I, I thought it was just uh, on my screen, but then mm -hmm. uh, the people in the back told me that it was uh, a seven reasons uh, it was uh, locked down. Yeah. 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 But, um, do you have uh, more to add here, Mayen? Do you have more to add, more things you'd like to bring in here? <clears throat> we had this, we had, we, we liked this presentation and, and then there yeah. was, I think the fact that Phytophthora, we work, I work also on Phytophthora, but on raspberry and the water is the big issue for us. I mean, we cultivate strawberry and raspberry on, on hills to have no waterlogged soil. And this is in a tremendous way to control Phytophthora in these crops. But I think for beans, it will be more difficult to plant them on hills, you know, <laughs> most probably. But uh, the control of water is crucial. And I think that was came also out from the presentation is related to water. Yeah, um, we have a technical problem with uh, Mayen. She cannot mm -hmm. come in uh, yet. The sound, no? <clears throat> you are still... Sorry, Mayen, uh, but it doesn't seem that we can, can bring you in again. Uh, so I think uh, we'd uh, say thank you, Vahela. We will say thank you very much to you, Mayen, uh, for doing the speak for us and also being here uh, on stage and uh, discussing with us about the problems in, in peace and favor being. So thank you very much, Mayen, for your contribution here. And uh, now um, I should like to know if there are some closing questions or, or remarks concerning the things we talked about this morning.
can I just very shortly? There was yeah. the wish of of uh, some of participants to have a kind of a database with experiences from growers with green manures to control soil borne diseases. And I think that's a little bit what you would like to do in Best for Soil, bring people and knowledge together. So I just mentioned this here, but I think this sounds like a good idea. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, were there more comments in the end of uh, of the chats? There was a question there. Can you please tell us about any research on organic matter levels through grass rotation and suppression of soil pathogens? Grass may be the solution for soil organic matter maintenance and suppression. Thank you. Uh, and this could be to, to Vincent as well, I think. Yes. I don't see the chat, so I can just repeat the question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Can you please tell us uh, about any research on organic matter levels uh, through grass rotation and suppression of soil pathogens? Grass may be the solution for soil organic matter maintenance and uh, suppression. I cannot say if a, if grass is the solution, but I think in in vegetable growing where I, I work, grass is grass species are really the best, most probably the best green manure because they are not in the same family as as the legumes. We had a workshop five, a few years ago in Switzerland, and this was clearly coming out that grass species are probably the best green manure species yeah. in vegetable growing. Yes. If they afterwards, it probably is a question of how much biomass you can create with grasses, you know? Yeah. To, to, but, for the soil organic matter. But there are also a comment uh, from Rick. Uh, yes, these are also concerns on grass in rotation concerning Fusarium and Rhizotonia. So, uh, yeah, everything... Uh, Mm -hmm. can be bad in in some way but that uh, means that what we said yesterday and also today uh, that uh, crop rotation is uh, oh. very important and it's important that we know as much as possible about our crops and uh, what could be what could harm them and uh, and what could uh, bring them in a good condition so uh, yeah important uh, topics here but I think uh, it's now uh, very soon to a closure of this uh, workshop. And uh, I'd like to, uh, to make uh, the closing of the workshop uh, now so that we can uh, end in time. So I'd like to say to you all, uh, firstly, I'd like to say thank you to you all for participating in this Best for Soil workshop. I hope you had a good experience. Uh, the project team and I would like to thank you for listening and participating uh, with your questions, experiences and comments. I would also like to say a big thank you to the speakers for a series of interesting presentations and also to everyone, everyone who has participated in the different countries for making this workshop possible. We encourage you to use the materials on the website bestforsoil.eu for your own information. But also when dissemination and teaching matters around soil health and disease management, if you haven't been able to give feedback, then I'd like to uh, ask you to uh, send questions and comments uh, to the project through the Best for Soil website. Finally, I'd like to again say many thanks to, for your time and active participation. We hope to be able to see you back in the field soon. So goodbye, best wishes and best for soil. <laughs>